Hello friends, Stevie B here. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be discussing some of the best strategies uh, for musicians looking to break into the world of music licensing in 2023. Uh, so for those of you who have been following me for a while now, you've heard me talk plenty about the benefits of licensing uh, your music for uh, you know TV and film, advertisements, uh, video games, and other types of content. Uh, but how do you get started in this business? That's the question that keeps coming up. And once you do get started, how do you build momentum? Um, well, many of you watching may already have your foot in the door uh, and you know, you're getting things started, hopefully. Um, others are relatively new to this and just trying to figure out uh, where to start on their journey. So in this video, I want to explore some really basic strategies that are going to help you and I'm going to discuss a few of the things that you should really be checking off your list of things to do this year uh, if you want to get into this game in any kind of serious way. So needless to say, there's many different types of licensing opportunities available out there. Uh, each one requires a, a different approach. So uh, it's really important to do your research. Um, and you know we can talk more about that in a minute, but assuming that you already have some great music uh, composed and ready to be showcased, I think that um, you know fundamentally, probably the, the first thing you're going to want to do is, and if you haven't already, is just to build a professional website. Um, having an online presence to showcase your music and you know to, to make it easy uh, for potential clients to contact you and see your work is essential. It's a, an essential tool in this business. I think some folks might argue that Spotify, SoundCloud, or like a disco uh, playlist uh, might suffice uh, for some opportunities. And that may be true in some cases, but I will say that in the years that I've been working as a full-time music producer, I can't tell you how many times, uh, you know, my website has been the deciding factor when clients have chosen to work with me. And that's especially the case for custom work. Uh, but freelancing gigs aside, if you're sending out applications to music libraries or networking with you know, publishers, uh, music supervisors, whomever, um, having a website is gonna look good. Uh, a website should connect the dots for all your social media. Uh, it should be simple, uh, easy to read. Uh, it should showcase your best and most relevant work, of course. And, and you know, ideally you got a nice picture of yourself as well. If you wanna take a look at my own website, as an example, it's stephenbettle.com. Uh, it's not perfect, but it definitely gets the point across. Next thing I wanna talk about, and again, this is assuming that you've got great music, uh, you know, ready to showcase, and maybe you've got um, a great website uh, already too. So what's next? Well, the next step might be to start doing some, uh, you know, research into music libraries and to start thinking about putting uh, some applications together. But um, there's something else that I want to discuss here, and it's something that I think often gets overlooked. So regardless of whether you've set your sights on working with royalty-free music libraries like Artlist and Motion Array, or working with more exclusive TV and production uh, libraries and striving for, uh, you know, to, to build up that those back-end royalties, I think probably the one most important thing that you need to be doing on a regular basis is just networking. Some of my best and most lucrative placements uh, and, you know, just general opportunities to grow my career have come about through networking and building relationships and just putting myself out there a little bit. And to be clear, I'm not even good at networking. I, at least I don't think I'm very good at it. Most of the time I feel like quite reclusive and, uh, you know, and, and I'm introverted. Uh, but the truth is that, uh, you know, all my networking is pretty much done online now. And that kind of works for me because, you know, it used to be that back in the day I'd have to go to these events and like schmooze with people in real life. Uh, and <laughs> I guess I had some degree of like social anxiety about those situations. I don't know, maybe it's gotten worse because of COVID. Uh, throw your thoughts in the comments below if you feel the same way. Anyways, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I think that it's really easy to uh, make connections with people online. Uh, and there's lots of chat forums and spaces where you can make friends and it's by making friends and hearing about um, other people's experiences that you're really going to learn quickly. And one of these connections may very well end up being the person who refers you to the right library or the right publisher, or just the right person who can really help you out in your career. Uh, this has absolutely been the case for me. It's unbelievable how much I've picked up just from people chatting in the Discord. 
and that's totally free to join. Uh, I'll put that link in the description. Lots of very knowledgeable folks in there. I, I definitely pick up a lot from just those chats alone. Many of the other YouTubers out there also discussing uh, music licensing. Um, they have their own uh, Discord servers as well. And beyond that, there's you know there's the paid communities uh, that have great value as well, like Jesse's Sync Academy, uh, Dave Croft's uh, 52 Qs, uh, Eric from Make Music Income has a, has a mastermind group going on. Uh, Daniel Carazales has a stock music mastermind uh, group. And of course, the greatest uh, you know community of them all is the Production Music Academy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm joking, of course, but I do cherish and love my community members and you all hold a very special place in my heart. Uh, and I will put that link below to the Production Music Academy. Go check that out. And in all seriousness, I, I really think that investing in some kind of like paid membership uh, can be extremely helpful uh, when you're starting out. I was a member of the Sync Academy uh, for a short while and uh, I learned a lot there. I enrolled in some Evident courses uh, back when they were first starting up and I would you know, share my work on their forums and get feedback from others and connect with other students and, uh, and all of that. And, and it really helped me out. But this is still something that like, you know, I try to do as much as possible. I put myself out there, uh, I get involved in conversations and um, you know, I just try to be as helpful as I can. And I just try to listen to what others are saying. And I've learned so much just from doing that. Okay, so you've got some great music. Uh, you've got a website. Um, you're making friends and connecting with folks. Uh, that's all great. What you need now is a strategy. And depending on what kind of music you're writing, uh, you're gonna wanna do some research on where to pitch your music. And this is maybe the trickiest part of the business. Uh, you know, there's many different music libraries and publishers and production companies out there, uh, and they're all a bit different. And the, you know, uh, the contracts and the expectations from each are quite varied. I think a conversation that comes up quite often is whether to pursue opportunities in the royalty-free and stock music marketplace or pursue opportunities with exclusive publishers uh, who can get your music uh, you know, potentially onto TV and broadcast networks. Both have their pros and cons, and in my opinion, I, I really do think it's worth taking a look at both. Uh, it's really a matter of how much music are you able to produce. Uh, if you're at a point where you can produce high quality material fairly regularly, then I think there's a lot of opportunity uh, out there in both markets. I'm actively pitching to both markets at the moment, and while most people you know, know me as someone uh, who's done quite well in the royalty free space. I'm just starting to get some traction in the TV uh, and sync um, space as well. And ultimately, the goal is to just, you know, get my music out there as much as possible. That's all I want to do. Uh, that's my strategy at the moment. Uh, but depending on where you're at uh, with your own journey, uh, you need to develop a strategy. And the best way to approach that is by being proactive uh, about doing research, being open to advice and feedback from others. Uh, reach out to folks and see what's working for them. Uh, join community forums. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Trust me, people are more than happy to help. Okay, so that's my quick rant for today. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Let me know what your strategy is for 2023. Uh, hit the like button if you got something positive from this video. Subscribe to the channel and check out the Production Music Academy. I'll put all those links below. Uh, join the Discord server and I will see you guys soon. Take care, bye.